VectorWorks Inc. have introduced a great new feature in 2017 called Plugin Styles. In this movie, I'll demonstrate how we've implemented this feature in Windor and also look at some of the other new functionality we've added to this version. Plugin styles work a bit like symbols. With symbols, you have a single definition that controls multiple instances in a drawing, but the instances are essentially clones of the parent definition. Plugin styles are also based on a symbol definition. However, with plugin styles, each instance or child is an independent object, and unlike the real world, you've got full control over the level of independence. So the children can be full or partial clones of the parent, but in all cases will react with walls in the same way as an independent window or object would. This is because they are still fully editable objects that just happen to be pulling some or all of their settings from the parent definition. With window styles and continuing with the parent-child metaphor, you can either have the children controlling what they take from the parent style, or the parent can control what is compulsory for the children to inherit. Unlike regular symbols, you can't actually enter the symbol to edit the window object in the usual way. Rather, you can only edit the settings of the object within via the various edit dialogues. One other thing to mention that flows on from the new resource manager is the resource pop-up in the toolbar. Here you'll find all the default content for Windor in the form of styled objects, which of course you can add to yourself. So here we have a Windor style containing a double hung window with internal trim and a masonry sill. Below it are three different looking children that have chosen to inherit the frame, internal trim and external sill settings. Everything else is independent of the parent. Note that if I change some settings in the parent definition, then the children only get the changes they have subscribed to. Here we have what I think will be a more common scenario. The parent definition is dictating that the children will inherit everything except the ID number and data settings. In order to make this happen and give the parent full control, you need to check the Copy and Apply Settings option in the Edit Window Style Definition dialog. Now if I make some changes to the parent, the children are obedient and compliant. Let's now take a closer look at how styles work in Windor. I've got a little model here. We've got selected currently three Windor objects that have a style applied to them called Window Louver. And up here we have a door and window object that has no style attached to it. So the first thing I want to show you is that you can switch the style for selected objects. So we've got these three objects selected. If you want to change the style, you would do it exactly the same way that you would change a wall style, a roof style, or a slab style. You just come up to the style menu and you choose replace. And then you're going to pop up that will list all of the available objects. And here we'll choose to replace it, say, with this double hung. And note we've got W5, W6, W7 IDs showing on those. Click OK. And those three objects are going to change to a double hung window, which you can see here now. But the IDs have been preserved and the reason for that is that the on schedule and ID numbers are not being controlled by the style. Now just to create a style from scratch you could take an object obviously that doesn't have a style or you could take an object that does have a style and up here choose convert to unstyled but we'll actually go ahead and use this one up here so we've got this set up pretty well as we want to have it uh, as the style symbol so to convert this to a styled object we right click on it and we choose new plugin style from unstyled plugin we choose the folder where we want to put it click OK and then the object properties dialog is going to come up and it's important here that when this appears you click the copy and apply styles button 
and give the style a name. So we'll call this French Doors 1, but obviously you can call it whatever you like. Then choose here what you want to be applying from the style to all of the objects. And then click OK to that. And then make any other changes here that you want in the form, settings, uh, or just in the general object info palette. When you're done, click OK. And this object will be converted to a styled object. And you can see here French Doors 1. And you'll notice that a number of items in the object info palette just became greyed out and that's because they are being controlled by the style. So we can actually collapse these ones, the general options here, and that will simplify the appearance of the object info palette. If we look up here in the resource manager you'll see that we now have this new styled object here called French Doors 1. Now if I wanted to edit that style I can do it from three different places. In the resource manager I can right click on it and choose edit and notice that because this is a red symbol containing a styled object you don't have the normal styled uh, sorry edit options like edit 2D, edit 3D and so on. You just have this one edit option. The second way to edit it is from the object info palette from the style pop-up we can choose edit style and the last way is to right click on the object and choose edit plugin style so let's go with that option and the object properties dialog will open again let's change this to say 2100 click OK and the object is obviously going to change now let's put another couple of these objects in the little model here so we'll come down and put one there and let's put another one there. So we can manually go through and change these IDs or we can just click the settings dialog and because the ID numbers are not being controlled by the style we can come in here so let's say we want these to start numbering at 10 update IDs yes click OK and so these IDs are now going to be 10 11 and 12. So Let's go ahead now and edit this again. And let's say we need to make it a bit smaller, 1900. You will notice that within the form dialog for this particular object, we have the width of these doors locked. And that means that when we are changing the overall width of the unit itself, the doors are not going to change the, the only change is going to be in these windows on either side. So that's why when we click OK that the doors are going to stay the same size but the windows are going to change in size. In Vectorworks 2017 you're now able to nominate the height of the cut plane for 2D top plan drawings and we've added support for this in Windor 2017 too. So here we have an example. We have a window that is above the nominated cut plane, which is uh, set at 1000 millimeters, and we have a window below the cut plane. And in Window, you can nominate differently how these two windows behave. You can also nominate differently how objects that are very close to the cut plane that you may want to just display normally, and also how objects that are a long way away from the cut plane are displayed. So let's take a look at this in Window and in the settings dialog in cut plane you'll see that uh, when cut plane is, is in use, which it is for this layer, the uh, elevation here is greyed out because it's being set by the layer. So here we have objects above the cut plane. You've got uh, three choices there, normal 2D wall break, simplified and just a locus and you've got the same options for objects below the cut plane. Objects that are just outside the cut plane, you can opt to include them or not, and you can also specify a distance for objects a long way away from the cut plane that you don't want to appear at all. So let's have a look at uh, the top plan view 
of this and note that there's a little wall here as well that's about six or seven hundred millimeters high so here are the two windows this one here that was below the cut plane is not showing at all the one that was above the cut plane is showing uh, as a dashed line and you'll notice that this wall here is even though it has the same wall style as th this cavity wall here it's not showing the cavities because it's below the cut plane so for example if I was to put this change the height of this wall to say a metre uh, you're going to see that the cavities will appear in that if I select this window here that I know is there that's uh, below the cut plane and I change its position in the wall let's uh, put it to 1200 you'll see that it's then going to appear with the addition of custom symbols in Windor 2017 you can now add custom door leaves custom sashes and replace glass uh, in nominated uh, grid openings let's take a look at how this works in the settings dialog there's now a new tab called custom symbols and you can choose a symbol to replace the door leaves with you can choose a different symbol to replace the sashes with and you can also choose a symbol to be used in nominated grid openings so for example with this one here it is designed to allow you to have two different types of glass within the one frame so for example you could have obscure glass in the bottom parts of the frame and um, clear glass in the top parts so typically this will just be a simple extrusion with a particular uh, texture applied to it um, so with these options here you also get to choose that um, window will still create the 2D geometry if you just replace a sash or a door and if you don't want to do that but want to replace the whole window symbol then you can do that as well in other words this will replace every bit of 2D and 3D geometry with the nominated symbol but it will still allow you to add door IDs window IDs and any data to the object so it will still get listed as uh, as you've described it or created it in uh, any schedules that you create if we look at this in the form dialog you'll see that there's a new addition here called symbol uh, s3 symbol 3 so any uh, grid opening where you nominate this as the type of sash then you will get your custom sash in that particular opening in past versions of window you've not been able to customize the description of the door or window type and for this version we've added the ability to do that so uh, for example a door like this which is a pair of French doors would be described uh, described as a hinge left or hinge right door so now we can customize that and let's take a look at how you would do it um, we'll go in here and edit the style this is a style control door but it works with non-style doors as well if we go into settings and in the scheduled data tab you'll see that there's a new option here set custom name so we could change this to uh, French doors whatever we wanted to call it click OK and then you need to make a change in the schedule from what you would have been using before which was probably just uh, using the type field so we need to change this to underscore underscore custom type click OK and you'll see that that description has now changed to French doors so you only need to do this for the doors or windows that don't have uh, the names that you need now it's possible to independently control the thickness of the sill in relation to the jams and the head so you'll see in the settings dialog the familiar frame members so here you'll see on this particular window we've got the jam set to 70 and we've got the sill set to 20 and you can see the corresponding difference there so if I set this back to 40 and this to 80 click OK then you're going to see that change take effect 
So hopefully you can put these changes to good use and as always let us know if any of the features need to be tweaked or you've got any other wishes for Windor.